Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the Greater Christ Temple Adult Sunday School class. We're just thankful that you uh, tuned in with us today, and we're excited about our lesson and, uh, and what we will unfold in that lesson today. At this time, we'll go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being the word. We thank you for the word that you left on record for us, Lord, to have guidance and directions concerning our lives, Father, in you. We thank you, O oh God, because you came. No one else could do it but you. And we thank that you came and you wrapped yourself up in flesh, manifested yourself as the Son of God, so that we too will become the sons of God. We will be in you. And Father, that we, O oh God, will see you as you are. We ask that you continue to touch those, God, that are sick, those that are shut in, those that are in rehab, those are recovering. We pray for those that are bereaved tonight and all those that are needing special comfort. Those that have special needs on the altar, we know that you said that you will supply every need according to your riches and glory. We thank you for that being done. Thank you for every student that is here. Lord, we ask that you continue to give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We ask that you continue to bless our superintendent as well as our pastor, Father, as they set forth the importance of Christian education. We give you glory for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. And our lesson tonight is coming from 1 John 3, 1 through 10. 1 John 3, 1 through 10. The title is The Love of God, The Love of God. And I'll just read the scripture here. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. But he that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth and not righteous is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. And of course, our key scripture is First John 3 and 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. So in our lesson outline, of course, we're going to be talking about the love of God, the mission of God, the children of God. The love of God, the mission of God, and the children of God. I just want to read a little bit uh, in reference to our context. The five books of the New Testament have been traditionally been attributed to the Apostle John. And we know the Apostle John was the beloved of God. He had a special relationship with God. He was the one that was always on the bosom of Jesus. And uh, he, uh, so who was one of, he was one of the original 12 disciples, of course. And three of the five, the ones we designate, three of the five uh, books, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, and of course, uh, the Gospel of John, and then you have also uh, Revelations. In church, history strongly associates John with the church in Ephesus, located in modern-day Turkey. And the three letters were probably written in the region of Ephesus. And the letters dated from the AD 80s or 90s. John would have been an older man by this time basically the elder. And uh, the dignity of his age peeks through in 1 John as he addresses his readers as little children. That's where we see that even in the context of the scripture, 
he addresses them as little children because of his age. And so I thought that was really interesting in that as well. And even with the love of God, of course, that's going to come from John because he had a special relationship with Jesus. So then even in John, uh, the love of God, is what we're going to talk about uh, our first particular part of this lesson uh, is basically dealing with our identity, our identity. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And how are we going to be called the sons of God except we be born again? We've got to be born again. And this love was bestowed on humanity through Father's sending of his only son, Jesus, to earth for our sins. We've got Romans 3 and 25. Therefore, was nothing that humanity could do to deserve God's love, but no amount of human love for God could influence what manner of love God has for humanity. And uh, so all this deals with the love of God, what he did in order to uh, make, make us the sons of God. And in order to be made the sons of God, of course, we were uh, born in sin, shaping in iniquity. And we know that with that being done, we had to be born again. And we know John um, uh, third chapter deals with being born of the water and of the spirit. And that's how we are being born again. And then in born of the water and the spirit, uh, being baptized in Jesus name and being filled with the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit, then we are to live a clean and righteous life. Uh, you know, before God. And so that's how we can also show our love to God is because we believe that he is. The scripture says that he that uh, coming to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. The reward we're looking for is the Holy Ghost and then abiding with Jesus forever. And so uh, the adoption occurs through the transforming power of the Holy Spirit so that we might share in God's glory. And it's Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 14 through 17. And we want to see if anybody could read that. Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 14 through 17, if y'all can read that. Somebody could get it. Romans 8, 14 through 17. You'd have to unmute to, to read it. Anybody got it? I have it. Okay, go ahead and read it, please. Uh, 8, 14 through 17. Okay. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And then I gotta go to what, 17? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Okay. Abba, Father. I lost my place. Okay. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen, amen. So thank you for reading that. So it's basically dealing with the adoption coming into Christ. And so that we know all of that is a part of becoming the sons of God, all of that, because we have to be adopted into the body of Christ. And it's through the baptism as well as the baptism of the Holy Ghost and that we become the sons of God. We're part of the family of God. And it's all a spiritual birth is what that is. It's all a spiritual birth. Okay. Uh, and then we read, therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Knoweth us not because it knew him not. Let's see. 
And the underlying Greek word translated world appears 23 times in 1 John. And it said, it is the final option to which this verse refers. In contrast to the children of God, the world has failed to know God and his abundant love revealed through Christ Jesus. Therefore, the world is also unable to know the children of God. As a result, believers can anticipate facing hatred from the world. And that is so true because the world don't really know us. They don't know God because they, they can't see. They, uh, they don't have a relationship with God. And there, there are a lot of people in the world, they know of God. They know of God. And even people would give reference to him being their Lord and Savior. But their lifestyle really does not reflect that. It doesn't reflect righteousness. So a lot of those things they're saying are just words, but not necessarily coming from a, a heart of relationship and being in Christ. And so, as it said, therefore, the world knoweth us not. They really don't because we are born of the spirit. So we're a whole different type of, 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 of existence when it comes to the spirit life of us. We were born of the spirit, even though we're in the flesh, but we are born of the spirit of God. Because he because says because it knew him not. So how can anybody that's unrighteous really know God? And no means relationship. Relationship is how we are looking at that word, no. So then uh, verse two says, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now I think that is really awesome to know that we are the sons of God. Now beloved, of course, as I said before, beloved uh, deals with uh, a person as a much loved person. People say beloved. It's a much loved person. And uh, of course, uh, when when you see here a much loved person deals with agape. Now the the um, the Greek word for agape is agape agapetos. E A G A P E T O S. And it means self-sacrifice and unconditional love. And that's the type of love that Jesus has for us. It is unconditional. So when you see the word beloved, to say I I am beloved of God, I am loved of God, he has an unconditional self-sacrificing love towards me. And I just think that's just really awesome right there to know that how much he loves us. And of course it deals with God's purity as well. John uses the greeting beloved five times in the epistle. Uh, and he counted himself with him as being the children of God. Verse two, it says, and it, it does not yet appear what we shall be. So we love now we are the sons of God, but it does not yet appear what we shall be. So it means that we have a hope. We're looking to, to, uh, to, to be with God and what we would develop into as we are born again and into the body of Christ and being connected to him. And it does not appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now that's an awesome thing right there, that we know that we're not going to always be the way we are now, but we're going to be changed. We're going to be changed. We definitely going to be changed. I want somebody to get 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, read verses 51 through 54. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, verse 51 through 54. First Corinthians 15, 51. Okay. Well, somebody is going to read. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the deal shall be raised incorruptible. 
and the dead, I'm sorry, and the dead shall be raised un incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the co this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible sh shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be thought brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up by in victory is that it amen 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 so that's that's the hope that we've got we've got something to look forward to because even with these bodies that we have i, I know I deal with some some physical challenges and some issues in my body, but I know that once I am caught up in the rapture, whichever way, whether I go by the grave or whether I go uh, alive, being alive and remain, I know I'm coming up out of this body and I'm going to be changed and I'll be changed forever. And so that's what we're looking for. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. We can only imagine how it's going to be. But our minds really can't totally grasp it because we have only been mortals. And so in order to be uh, changed to immortal, uh, then it's really going to be an awesome experience that we are looking at. And when he shall appear, we shall be like him. So even with, with that being said, when we see Jesus, you know, we have the song, when we see Jesus, amen. But when we see him for the first time, it's going to be awesome. We, we can't even imagine what he looks like. I know we see a lot of pictures about Jesus, people, paintings of Jesus. We got the blue-eyed Jesus. We got the long-haired Jesus. We got the white woolly hair Jesus. Uh, we got the old man looking Jesus. There's so many ways they are depicting Jesus. But one thing about it is when we see him, we're going to see him as he is. We're going to see him face to face. We're not going to see he, see him like Moses did. Just show me your glory. And he showed him his hinder parts. No, we're going to see him face, face to face. face. And the Amen. only way we can see him face to face is we have to be changed. We can't see him in this flesh. If we sin, see him in, in our mortality and our mortal body, we would just disintegrate, you know, because it'd be too much. That's why he had to show him just, just a little bit of his glory. He had to show Moses just, let me just give you like, just a little peek of my glory. Because if I show you all of it, you're just going to disintegrate because that's just how powerful he is. <laughs> That's really amazing. Anybody have any comments or questions with that? I, I, yeah, I think it's all awesome. It, it, it's so uh, hard to comprehend how spectacular that's going to be. Mm -hmm. yeah, just we're going to see him face to face. It's like unbelievable. Unbelievable. But, unbelievable. But uh, I'm excited. I, yes. <laughs> the more I read, the more excited I get. Amen. Because, you know, all of this is not really taught to you right away. Mm -hmm. And um, we it's like we, we started out wobbling. Then we fall down and we get back up and then they give us another little snapshot of something else. But to actually think about him appearing before us, you know, us being changed into something else on the way up, you know, I just, you know, it's just exciting to me. <laughs> That's it, is. All. it is so exciting. Thank you for sharing that. And even in the next verse, verse three, it kind of leads into uh, what we need to do in order to make sure that we're changed and that we are the sons of God. And every man that had this hope in him purifieth himself, purifieth himself. Now, of course, mm -hmm. this verse uh, before us contains the only usage of the underlying Greek now, hope, in any of the writings of John. The Greek word translated purifieth 
in the writings of John. Thus, um, we have two rare words back to back. Drawing our attention, purify it, refers either to ceremonial purification, mm -hmm. uh, per the law of Moses, taking a vow when the word is used with a particular grammatical construction and moral purification. Now we know uh, in reference to the ceremonial purification, we know that they had to purify themselves by um, uh, certain things they had to do in part, as far as washing themselves and even taking the blood, even when the, um, when, uh, the, the uh, priest would get ready to go to offer up sacrifices unto the Lord, there were certain things he had to do ceremonially. So there was a lot of things that got into that in reference to the ceremonial purification per the law of Moses. It was a lot of things that they had to do. Uh, and then of course, taking a vow when the word is used with a particular grammatical construction. And that's dealing with another part of that. But the third part deals with moral wow. purifications, moral purifications. So I want somebody to get James 4 and 8. Somebody else can read James 4 and 8. James 4 and 8. And then somebody get First Peter 1 and 22. And you all have to unmute to come in. James 4 and 8. And then First Peter 1 and 22. James 4 and 8. Uh-huh. It's to draw near to draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Amen. Amen. One thing, thank you for reading. One thing about the book of James, uh, it will help you to get yourself together in reference to staying in in in, in right standing with God. It will take you through those areas in which you uh, you know, we'll really need to uh, to do in order to stay in right standing with God. If you ever get just a little off course, J the book of James will help you to get right back on course. First, thank you, uh, Minister Smith. First Peter 1 and 22. I have it. Okay. Um, I think I got it. Okay. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another <clears throat> fervently with a pure heart. Love one another fervently with a pure heart. So all of this deals with purification. Thank you for reading that. Uh, mm -hmm. All this deals with purification. And if you notice with the purification, it says purify yourself. Purify mm -hmm. yourself. We've been baptized as a, as a form of purification, baptized in Jesus' name. All of our sins were washed away, and we uh, rose to the newness, newness of life. No more sin was, in, uh, was uh, attached to us. We were cleansed and pure of all unrighteousness. And what helped us to stay pure and clean was the Holy Ghost that will lead and guide us and allow us to have the power to walk in the righteousness of God. But of course, should we sin, we still can come back to a pure state. Purifying yourself, you gotta what? Confess your sins. And, and he's faithful to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So we still have to do it ourselves. Jesus already came. He, 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 was, he was the ultimate sacrifice for our sin. And so that now, now he's leaving it up to us to now purify ourselves, keep ourselves pure, keep ourselves holy unto him so that when he comes back, we can be, we can be with him. We can change from mortal to immortality and we can see him as he is. I do not want to see Jesus in his wrath. I do not want to see God in his wrath. You know, I don't. I, I, when I see the judgments that's in the earth now, and just the judgments alone is horrifying. But to actually see his face in wrath, oh, I, I don't really want to experience that at all. I don't want to miss, miss the rapture. I, I've got to get out of here. I have got to get out of here. So we have to purify ourselves. And uh, verse 3b says, even as he is 
pure, even as he is pure. So if we are the sons of God, then we have to be like him in every aspect of the word. And even uh, even with the word uh, um, um, uh, perfect, perfect means mature. So we have to come into the mature state of the child of God. You know, we have to make sure that we continue to work on coming into maturity. And that as well means that we have to make sure that we purify ourselves. Uh, any questions or comments? All right. Thanks, Martha, you froze it in my computer. I did, okay. Am I still froze? I can hear you. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, good. No. Okay, thank you. So now we're looking at the mission of God, the mission of God. We've already went through um, what did I say? the love of God. Now we're dealing with the mission of God. And the mission of God comes about because there is a situation that we have been in. We have been in a, a bad situation. Why? Because we was born in sin, shaping in iniquity. So whoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Transgression means that any, anything that you do are as opposed to God, anything that you do that, uh, that violates uh, the law of God is transgression, is transgression. And so um, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And I'm going to read the next one, verse 5. And, and then, so therefore, because of that, now he's given us a solution. He already um, knows that we have a situation because we were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. But there's a solution to that. And you know that he was what? Manifested to take away our sins and our sins and in him is no sins. And so we, we think about that because he, he wrapped himself up in flesh, came and dwelt among men because for God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We had a situation because we was going to perish, but he needed us to, uh, he needed to come and help us in reference to the solution to our simple nature. And that's when he came and he wrapped himself in flesh because nobody else could do it. Of course, in the, uh, New, in the Old Testament, they used all different types of animals and offered sacrifices and that was to cover the sin but there was now an atonement because of the blood of jesus christ he atoned that sin takes it totally away so he made provisions that we were born in sin but he made provisions for the solution and the solution was that he manifested himself came and dwelt among us and became the ultimate sacrifice for our sin and the scripture says, verse six says, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. So there are, again, if you continue to purify yourself, keep yourself clean, you will continue to abide in him. Just like it says, you got to abide in the vine, you know? Uh, so we have to continue to be connected to the vine because if we're not co connected to the vine, then we're going to die out. But we want to continue to live, especially live and abide in Christ. Any comments? Any comments or questions? Doing good. <laughs> Thank you very kindly. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 6b. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. The word seen there is perceive. You can't even perceive. And you know, we, we, we know that we witness the people and uh, try to get them to have an understanding about uh, the born again experience and, and all of that and how Jesus came. Uh, but unless it's revealed to them, they can't even perceive what we're talking about. And even with Nicodemus, I have a Okay, That may just be my computer. Okay, am I still freezing? 
Okay, you're back on. Is anybody else being frozen? Is it just my computer? She's not frozen on mine. Okay. Me either. All right. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. And so it's, it's a matter of revelation, but they can't perceive him. Uh, and it said, neither know him. And know also deals with relationship. The only way you can really know Christ is to come into a full relationship with him. And that he can download wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of him. He can reveal things to you. And it's all through the spirit. We've got to have the spirit of God in order to know and have a relationship with him. Then we're going to deal with the children of God, the children of God. Of course, we talked about uh, John and how he always refers to us as the children of God. Verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. The phrase little children is a favorite greeting of the Apostle John. Some people in the community had attempted to deceive the believers and lead them astray from the truth. And I just want somebody to comment on that and how you're seeing that played out in the earth today. How you're seeing so much deception played out in the earth today. And not only that is how there are, uh, there's a lot of heresy uh, in reference to the word of God. I want uh, maybe a couple of people to tell kind of comment on how you see that happening in the earth today. False teachings, deception. Just unmute and come on in. Well, you have the false prophets and, you know, you got uh, the people who practice witchcraft and all those kind of things that is always trying to uh, change the mind. Is the, the devil is using devil can use anybody just in anything. But he, he, um, when we listen to others and they steering us wrong, we that's being deceived. This, that's deception. But. The Bible said, try the spirit by the spirit and you'll know whether it's of God or not. Mm -hmm. So deception is you got people doing it. Come knock on the door. It's like scam. Everybody scamming everybody else. So lying and spreading gossip and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you got all kind. You got all kinds of deception that's going on. Mm -hmm. That's true. Thank you for and, sharing that. Uh, You're right about yeah. that. <laughs> Go ahead, somebody and, else. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's just got spoke fully. Uh, but uh, yeah, she, she's right. And and I think that from the from <clears throat> from the fact that uh, it's difficult for us to almost believe anything, and as crazy as it is, the man that's vying for president again got shot at and it's difficult for us to believe whether or not it was a setup or if it was real right that to me that level of of i guess deception is out there now to the point where it's very difficult to 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 even perceive anything in marvin gay's song i heard it to the grapevine something he said he said uh, believe half of what you hear and none of what you see. And it's got to that point where it is very hard to believe anything. Yeah. And, and, and if, if we've gotten to that point in society, along with everything that it seems as if the, the, the enemy is try, is showing us that Nothing is, 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 he's pushing the narrative of that. Nothing is for real, even God, because mm -hmm. people question God now and the Bible more so than ever before. That's true. You know, at, at some point, at some point there, there's a level of reverence for, for who God was, that even the, the property, the grass, the, the yard that the church stood on. 
Mm-hmm. And it's, it's to the point now to where people, they, they don't regard that because nobody's believing that it's real or right. that it can be real and that it can actually change an individual or save a soul. So the, 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 the level of deception that, that, that's here now, it's, it's very difficult. Pe- people have their own truths, whatever that is to them. Mm-hmm. And, we, and it's very difficult to change, to get them out of that. But God is still real. God is still true. And, he, and even with all this going on, his expectation is for us to still witness. Ooh. What does that look like for the child of God now? It's but true. I digress. You go ahead. I'd like to add a little to that, uh, to uh, Ian. It's kind of difficult helping people sometimes to understand, and maybe younger people, the difference between religion, being religious, and being spiritual, and the whole concept of it. Don't take all that to be safe. So I think sometimes the the the, the rituals and some of those kinds of things you go to, as opposed to starting with understanding the Word of God, helping everybody to understand the importance of teaching learning process so that that uh, you're not so easily deceived and being with the spirit of the Lord, you know, or even young people kind of know if they may be going a little off, a little back on, not just young people, all of us, because the spirit is going to kind of lead you back in. What helps is not focusing and so much on the religious piece of it, but depending on the spirit of the Lord, which is lesson is saying the love of God. He loved us so much that he knew that we couldn't walk this walk or do this thing on our own because we were born in sin. The devil is our father when we were born, but he loved us so much that he didn't leave us there. He came, he died, he left us with the baptism in Jesus and he left us with the Holy Ghost. And it's an everyday journey, not perfect, but but um professing or or maturing into where he wants you to do with the leading of the spirit and helping with the teaching of those who are in um positions or whatever to actually teach not what we think or what we think is whatever, but tie everything back to what does the Bible say about this? That is the truth. And that's that's the thing. We always have to take them back to the word of God because the word of God is true. Whether they, and some people have even um, made their own Bibles, you know, to to, to read the way that they want it to, to read, the way they want, to, want you to believe and all that is deception as well. Um, and so a lot of different people with different lifestyles they have their own bibles according to their lifestyle and according mm-hmm. to their beliefs so you know that is straight out deception uh as well and and it's like the enemy is just really uh bold Amazing. very bold in what he is doing now uh sister scales did you have something you had to, you wanted to yeah, say yeah i was going to say yeah. on the same line that people um people are being deceived by uh, going into the church and the church having an appearance of um, being faithful and holy, but they're really not teaching the truth. So the uh, people that are there attending don't know don't know any better because they're just coming in. So that deceives a lot of people. And say the mother and the father is there. They bring their children and they continue to do it. And they never receive a word. They receive it from other people outside. But they will never believe it because of what they are being taught. That's deception. And I I see that a lot. Um, We get the word. And we know we get the word. We know God is real. But they don't, they will say God is real, but they don't even know him. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. just because they go to church. You know. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm saying just appearance of appearance of and then but really not. But really not. Yeah. Because even right. with even mm-hmm. with the Holy Ghost, uh, um, there are some people that uh it, it's it kind of it's really like what's going on also, and I see your hand, uh Evangelist Jones. Uh there's a strong delusion mm-hmm. in the earth. And so we have to be aware mm-hmm. of that delusion because it can, like she said, the look, it can appear right, they can shout right, they can preach like it's right. Uh, I mean, they could say words is just right from the Bible, but their lifestyle uh, is not right. And then even in 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 their uh, standards and and uh, the things that they really are, have guidance in in reference to the word and being the church, so called church, is totally opposite of what God has required of us in here. So yes, we have to be careful just because. It looks right, doesn't necessarily mean it's right. So we, and the, but I think that's where the Holy Ghost comes in because the Holy Ghost, they really have the Holy Ghost. It comes to lead and guide you to all truth. And uh, so as they have the Holy Ghost, they really have a heart towards God. I really don't believe the Lord will allow them to be in a place that is deceptive and not teaching the truth with the Holy Ghost that he won't reveal something to them. But some people are, as you said, their parents might be there and they just know, well, this is what my, I know my parents wouldn't lead me wrong. I know, I know my parents would, they've been here all their life and, 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 and I, I just see how they try to live their life right, you know, but, uh, but it's not, not what it's supposed to, it's not still total truth. It may be part truth. There are some people, they have the, they have the Holy Ghost, but they don't have the baptism. So their sins still remain. God is allowing them to have his spirit to lead and guide them to all truth so their sins can be washed away and they could be totally righteous unto God. But there are a lot of churches that are not. They're, you know, I call it partial birth. <laughs> partial birth. Uh, Evangelist Jones. Uh, no, um, I may be, am I off of mute? Let's see. Okay. We can hear uh, you. Oh, okay, good. Uh, hopefully I'm still in the vein of what you are all talking, but uh, what goes back to, uh, I believe that was uh, um, Minister um, Fuller was that, uh, talking. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I know y'all kind of curved it around to the church, but I didn't, I didn't think that you was talking about uh, the deception as far as limited to the church. Uh, I'm looking at the fact, you know, when we looking at deception and all, you know, it's like you said, and he said from every angle, you know, Mm -hmm. um, there's deception and, uh, where I see it the most is in our children, uh, when, uh, the deception came when we can no longer discipline our children. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we can't tell them what's, we can tell them what's right, but you know, we had a right at one time to kind of show them what was right, but you go to jail for that now. Um, but, uh, if, so if we can't, uh, um, discipline them in the ways that we need to discipline them in order to uh, keep them from being deceived like they are today, then how do we get them to those that maybe not even know church yet? Mm -hmm. So how do we get them to the church with all of the deception that's already been planted in them? Like some of you have already said, there is no God. Okay, Mm -hmm. or I I write my own Bible or, you know, uh, whatever else that you can come up with, you know, Mm -hmm. that's uh, along the line of deception. Mm -hmm. That's what I needed to say. That's good. And you brought out a real good point there as well, because the way the laws have been changed, it is really changed just basically so uh, society would really fail. Mm-hmm. Well, there's no hope. It's it's just kind of written so society will fail, and we're just going to corrupt ourselves. And that that's true. And ourselves. another uh, another thing to that, and I'll be done, is that uh, I've always say even the enemy themselves know God's word, yes. and just the fact that you know uh, the enemy know that a disobedient child would never live out to see his days because the word says so. And so what do we have? 
our children not living out to see their days. Why? Because of the deception. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's good. That's a good point. You're right. Sister yeah. Cora Brown hands been up a little Sister, while. I'm sorry, Sister Cora Brown, and after Sister Brown, Sister Sandra Muirhead. Yeah. Uh, thank you. What I was thinking about is that today's time, day and time, we have something called AI. Yes. That's, yeah. It's scary. Um, I can. I went on AI where you can change your. You put your face in this costume and you can do all I've done it. I've had a good time change the hairstyle. But the thing about it is we can see stuff that it appears to be real. I mean that stuff looks real, but that's a deception because it is not real. Uh we have meta now. So mm -hmm. all that information, all that kind of stuff, it can be changed like used to be say, you know, we say don't believe your lying eyes, you know, because you don't believe nothing you see. I mean nowadays it is scary to, you can't believe anything. You can see a couple going down the aisle getting married and that ain't even real it's it's just it's, it's a one of those made up things but it look like it's real so we got the ai we got meta and we we got tiktok and lord have mercy everything going on on tiktok right. and i know that because i i watch my children because they get i can switch over there i can see that stuff mm -hmm. but the thing is it's it's all these deceptions nowadays that seems to be what's what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. Mm -hmm. And the wrong stuff looks so right. Every, I'm not going to say just young people. We old people, there are pe you're getting scammed with, uh, what do you call those? Uh, romance scams. That's the word I was trying to think of. Romance scams. Older ladies and older men getting scammed by women and men for money or whatever. All these types of deceptions. It seems to be real, but it isn't. So, these are all the things that in today's society we're we're confronted with. That's true. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That's a good point. That AI, yes, is taking over. <laughs> that AI, I tell you, sister of your head. All these are good points. Thank you all for for sharing. Sister of your head. I was thinking about when um it was mentioned about he'll guide you, the, the Lord will guide you into all truth. I remember from my former church, this uh, sister, she went to one of these uh, mega Baptist church back in the day. And uh, I don't know if she had got baptized before and went back to the church. But anyways, uh, I noticed at night services, she would come back and, uh, and she would come back and she'd come back and she'd come back and eventually she left the church. The, her former uh, church that she was attending and um, stayed at this, uh, the former church that I came out of where I got baptized in. So it goes to show you that the Lord will guide you into all truth, regardless of whether, uh, regardless of the mega church that she attended in the past, uh, she's still in apostolic faith as of today. That's good. That's good that she came back, like you said, the truth is in, and it's kind of like where it's leading us to that next scripture in reference to the seed. Uh, verse 8 says, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And uh, for the sake of time, I'll go ahead and read this all. And it deals with um, God's seed, God's seed. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. And the underlying Greek word translated born appears 10 times in 1 John. All instances of that word in this letter refer to a person's spiritual birth being uh, into being a child of God. People who have experienced this spiritual birth do what is right, know God and love others. And uh, so, and then it says that Jesus is the Christ, overcome the world and will not continue in sin. And if, if the seed is in you, these are the things that you will live by and that you would do in reference to the word of God. But I want to get to verse 10. Verse 10, uh, I thought that was interesting that that was a part of this lesson, even how it came about. Verse 10, and this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. 
whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, which we already know that, but neither he that loveth not his brother. Now that that's strong right there because uh, that was in that same thing, <laughs> the same verse in reference to in this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, in reference to that, we can always go back to that nature, that old nature often tries to come back, you know, up. Uh, if you have, have an alt against your brother, you know, you have to go and get it right there again. It goes back to that purify yourself. So when you see some of these traits come back in and it says, neither he that 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 loveth not his brother. Uh, we have to be careful that we uh, make sure that we show the love of God. And that's what this lesson is all about, the love of God. And so if we have God on the inside of us, the seed of righteousness on the inside of us, then we have to produce fruit just like he does, the fruit of the spirit, the love, joy, peace, long suffering, those things need to come. That even if our brother does us wrong, we still have to love him. And it says, pray for those that despitefully use you, say all manner of evil against you. And uh, of course, I always use this scripture when I'm coming up to a hard time in relationship to others that, that may betray me or even offend me. Uh, I, I, it's something about that praying for them that despitefully use you or say all manner of evil against you, anybody that hurts you, because you can't hate somebody and pray for them at the same time. You can't do it. And so that's that's the that's one of the tools that I use that when I'm easily when I'm offended or anything like that, I'm like, okay, let me make sure I'm forgiving real quick. Because we don't know where God is. We don't know where where the rapture is. Just as soon as somebody offends you, the enemy will use somebody to offend you. And next thing you know, that real bitterness and that hatred will build up real quick. Because we're not far from, from the flesh, the flesh. I mean, we're in the spirit, but we're not far from the flesh. And just that quick, we can go to the flesh and we can develop those same old, old, the old man that's in us. And if we're not careful, if we hadn't purified ourselves, and going to confess, Lord, I, 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 I really despise that person. I, I'm aggravated that person, <laughs> whichever way it is, you know, purify yourself so that you can stay connected to God and to make sure that we're ready to see him as he is so we can take off this mortal and put on immortality. We got to continue to purify ourselves. And as we purify ourselves, we will walk in the love of God. That's the whole thing. And we would develop that agape love that we love unconditionally. And that's the love of God. He loves unconditionally. He is, he, he's, he has the agape love, the agape love. And even with John, uh, the beloved, you know, um, I, I just really um, am blessed by reading John and especially knowing the relationship that he had with Jesus, the beloved, a much loved person a much loved person is because of his heart. So we wanna have the heart of Christ that we have the love of God. Any questions or comments uh, anybody have to say? Any comments? Hey, Dr. Crick, you have any announcements? Um. The um gonna ask those of you who are um, gonna be coming to the back to school uh, back, I think it's August the 31st. Uh, Sunday school is responsible for doing the kids' zone. And what that means is we just need people out there who will help with the um the young children activities we'll be doing face painting we'll be trying to do maybe some uh, balloon animals i think there'll be some bounces out there so just kind of let us know what you can help us do additionally bishop Merritt and um the executive board meeting has given us instructions to give the, get the church ready for the council the september council and so we're just asking not, not only the teachers of the superintendents because there are only three of uh, superintendents, and we need everybody's help. 
uh, but we they've been they have asked us to make sure the second floor, which is pretty much where the Sunday school classes are held, those areas are clean. When you mean clean, you mean wipe down, cleaning out the bathrooms. There are two bathrooms there. We don't, my understanding, have a custodian um, full time there, and so it's kind of dependent upon the sinks and everybody to get everything together and to help us. And also, as we lastly with this, as we talk about uh, God's love and how we get the love out there and tying it back into Bishop Mary's Bible class and teaching us how we have to be disciples and one part of that is showing the love. And so in Sunday school, we start that as we talked about it earlier, but the teaching. So we need teachers who are willing to work with the uh, non-adult classes. Uh, we probably understand that our facility may be completed by the end of next year. And so uh, there'll be others who will be coming into uh, the church. And so what we need is for those persons who are interested in uh, teaching at every level to just kind of let us know if you're interested in there. And there's some responsibilities that come with uh, teaching and that means that you have to come to teachers and you have to go to Bible class, you have to be prepared for your class, you can just show up and, and kind of uh, uh, put out there with the students. So we're asking for anybody who is on the line, uh, one of the criteria is baptism in Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost and Bishop Mary has to give the approval. But there are other saints at the church uh, that may be interested in teaching. So I'm going to encourage everybody, I don't know, sometimes you see me and I'm down. I'm inviting people to the teachers meeting on Thursday night so that it is so important for we just get the word in us. And then Bishop Mary just ask us also, like we're going out with witnesses so we can start just by sending the emails out to our friends, our coworkers and others just come in and kind of get the Zoom uh, teaching in and then coming in on the Sunday class. So uh, just asking everybody to get uh, involved and um, invite others to get involved in the uh, Sunday school program. That's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for that. And of course, the the sun, uh, the sun, back to school is now also incorporating the uh, picnic, the church picnic, because they had tried to schedule the church picnic separate, but they decided to incorporate that with the back to school. So it will be one great day of festivities. Uh, of the church as well as the back to school. So I'm sure there'll be sitting announcements out there. Uh, Minister Smith, did you have any? Did you have a comment? So, no, ma'am. No, ma okay. I was gonna. I was gonna say about the back to school thing, but since you got it, I ain't aware about it. Okay. All right. And also this Sunday, and you may have heard the announcements yesterday, but on Sunday, uh, Bishop Merritt is doing a tour of the of the uh, the new sanctuary. So anybody that's wanting, you don't have to have on your hard hat. But he said he'll take a group. We'll be going in as a group to tour the internal um, part of the new sanctuary. So all those who want to do it right after church, he's going to take us on a tour. So we're excited about that. Also, I do want to um, mention that next Saturday is um, uh, the Glory Encounter uh, that I will be hosting at Greater Christ Temple in the Fellowship Hall next Saturday at from 9.30 to about 1.30. It does include lunch. It's a $30 registration fee. You can either register via Cash App or you can register at the door. We do have some dynamic speakers and uh, uh, praise and worship leaders and our praise dance team is going to be actually ministering. And, uh, and then we have a keynote speaker, which is Evangelist Somerville. Those that have gone to the May convention this past May convention. She was one of the speakers there, and I'm telling you, she's just really awesome. So we'll be glad to have you all come and be a part. It's dressed down, very casual, you know, just come comfortable uh, and enjoy yourself. Next Saturday from uh, 9.30 to about 1.30 is the Glory Encounter. And just we're looking forward uh, to what the Lord is going to do in our midst. Yeah. Right. The uh, I just want you to specify, you said next Saturday, so I wasn't clear if you're talking about August 10th or August 17th, so August 17th. can you give me a date? August 17th, I'm sorry. It's oh, August, okay, thanks. Yeah, August okay. the 17th. All right, thank you. 
Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks for your head. Praise Lord. So, Dr. Crook, I just wanted to mention about the uh, region next uh, 2025. If they got to the 31st to do the early bird restoration, that's uh, what, $15? I'm looking at the form right now. So, they got to August the 31st. Okay, thank you. And uh, if you bring the form to me on Sunday, or if you can uh, email it to me, I can make some copies of it and uh, we can distribute them too. I have a question. Uh, Dr. Crook, did, are we getting new books this year? Yes, the books are in. We passed them out on this uh, Sunday uh, in uh, Sunday school. And so, Sister Karen has them. If you uh, want a book, um, then um, you have to come to Sunday school and uh, get a book. Get the book because we're signing for them because one person, one book. I'm in Sunday school. Oh, yeah, I got to come to the church. Come in. Well, she's, okay. Yeah, she's got hauling all those books around. They're heavy. I, yes, I just wondered if she was. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much are they? The books are, uh, they are they're, there's no cost for the books because we pay for them when we put in our Sunday school offering. Oh, okay. Thank you. Also, you don't want to forget the Kentucky Tennessee Council is coming up in September. Uh, the council dues for the Saturday is $5. Um, if you have not already did the uh, Blue Ribbon pre registration, it's $15 to take care of for the year. Just remember that the council is coming up and this, for that Saturday, it's going to be $5 if you haven't registered. So, Sakura, I think her hand is up. Uh, it's Sister Brown again. Here we just we we say stuff and we don't say what dates we're talking about. So Tara just stated the council's coming up in September. When she didn't say. Can we get some dates, please? Thanks. And it's gonna also be in the newsletter. So the newsletter. Everybody just make sure you <laughs> sign up for the, the newsletter too. But yeah, tell them the date too. Uh, the yes. council's gonna be September twenty fourth through the twenty. Nine. 28th. 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 And so the 28th is when Christian education is going on. And it's going to be on that Saturday. Council and then it will also be giving, uh, they'll be giving further details about it during the announcement. So just be on the lookout. But it's going to be a great price temple on that Saturday. Uh, and the dues are $5. And the date is September 28th. I think two nice services will probably either be at the Church of God or perhaps at, I think they're still working on uh, the second location, but it'll be out there. But I know Thursday night, thinking about it, may or may not be on Young's Night. Uh, Friday night, it will be at the Church of God or the second uh, location that they're trying to pin down. Don't make me come. Uh... Right, our hearts and minds clear. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this lesson, God. We thank you, Lord, for just the things, God, that you are preparing for us. We just can't fathom just seeing you face to face. Help us to continue to live our lives according to your will and your way and your word. We ask that you protect us, God, in our outgoing and coming in and continue to keep our minds stayed on you. Touch those, God, that had a desire to come into a class and not one able to make it. And even those that are attending on Sunday, Father, we thank you for those that have a hunger for, for the word of God. We ask that you can help us to continue to keep your word hidden in our hearts. We might not sin against you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Excellent job.